Hi, I'm Mark Bedore. Today's Wild West is on location in Lone Pine. It's one of the greatest Western movie locations of all time. North of us is where a Randolph Scott outdraws Lee Marvin. Where hundreds of classic Westerns have been filmed. This is where it's happening. You can't imagine this until you see it. And home to what may be the best Western movie museum in the country. And so the next day, his assistant came in with his chair. Plus, Rifleman star Johnny Crawford. And I'm very fortunate to have been part of it. We'll take you to the Lone Pine Film Festival coming up on today's Wild West. The Wild West. It's still out there. And we'll show you how to find it. This is today's Wild West. When all hell breaks loose, you get him. Come on, get him. Making movies on location in Lone Pine, California. How's my, how's your exposure and everything? Looking good? Okay. The Korean actor group known as the Ghost Riders are shooting a film and lots of blanks. In one of the greatest Western movie locations on earth, the famous Alabama Hills on the Eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada mountains, just outside Lone Pine, California. Here in the shadow of Mount Whitney, tallest peak in the lower 48 states, more than 400 movies have been shot since the 1920s, most of them westerns. A few steps uh, north of us is where a Randolph Scott outdraws Lee Marvin, and Lee Marvin drops dead, and seven men from now is right out here. And every Columbus Day weekend, that heritage is celebrated during the Lone Pine Film Festival. This is the Lone Ranger Canyon where in 1938 it was the first on-screen telling of how the Lone Ranger became the Lone Ranger. Movie fans come from all over the country and around the world to walk in the footsteps of the Lone Ranger and most any other Western star you can think of. It's, it's cowboy land out here, you know, it's, uh, there's no other place like it. John Wayne filmed here, as did Clint Eastwood, Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, Gene Autry, Hopalong Cassidy, Randolph Scott, and so many more. Reenactor John Kircher has been coming to Lone Pine for more than 30 years. Oh, this is, this is like waking up to a dream. During the festival, some 150 photo placards are set up throughout the 30,000 acre Alabama hills, marking the exact spot where a scene from one of those classic films was shot all those years ago. The Alabama hills are federal land administered by the Bureau of Land Management. That's why this country looks exactly the same as it did back in the 1920s when movie cameras first rolled here. And this is still an active movie location today. Some of the recent films made here include Iron Man, Gladiator, and most recently, Django Unchained. Over the years, many of the celebrities who made movies returned for the festival, including Roy and Dale, Ernest Borgnine, Jack Palance, Gregory Peck, Richard Farnsworth, and Peggy Stewart, just to name a few. Today, many of those beloved stars are gone. But after more than 25 years, the festival is still going strong. We have never been a celebrity-driven film festival. We have never been a film-driven film festival. We have been a location film festival, on location in Lone Pine. That's the deal. For those people to go out into these rocks and stand where Roy and Dale stood, to stand where Jack Palance stood. While celebrities may not be the focus, they're still a big part of this event, like Diamond Farnsworth, son of Richard Farnsworth, stuntman, stunt coordinator, and second unit director for the hit TV show, NCIS. My dad loved to come up here, and he loved it up here. He, he worked up here, and the people up here treat you really well. And when they start inviting me up here, I just kind of connected, and it was a great feeling to come up here with all these people. And we used to have a lot of older gentlemen that would come up, the old actors, and it was just so great to hear them talk. And, and that's part of our history, you know, of the old West and stuff. And I'd, best of my ability, I'd like to keep it going on. And today, yeah. even actors who yeah, never worked here are excited to come to the festival, like Bruce Boxleitner. I've never shot up here, but I'm here as a fan of the Western, fan of the Westerns and, and films that were shot up here. The festival gives fans the chance to meet Diamond, Bruce, and other stars, like Johnny Crawford of Rifleman fame. When we made the pilot in the January of 58, I was 11. More on that coming up. But first, a closer look at the real star of this show as we go on a movie location tour of the Alabama Hills. Oh my goodness. Sunrise in the Alabama Hills. It's gorgeous, That's gorgeous. 
It's a special treat to be out here as the sun's first warm rays light up the granite of the towering Sierra Nevada mountains. Photographers do their best to capture the magic, but no picture can do this place justice. Even though you've seen it, you know, on film or on TV, it's not until you come here that you can really, really appreciate it. Our tour guide is cowboy poet Larry Maurice, a horseman who's ridden many of the same trails as the Hollywood heroes who filmed here. A lot of the, you know, the real get after it type scenes are actually done out in the, off the road out there. The footing is just great and it's, uh, it's soft and uh, I used to have the great fortune of letting a couple of horses go 9-0 through this stuff and they just, they love it. I mean, it's just really kind of cool. The demographics of the film festival admittedly skew a bit older. But classic Western movies are still a big attraction, even to those born long after they were made. Well, I'm pretty obsessed with a, a lot of old Westerns, but especially the Bud Bedecker, Randolph Scott ones. And just because the, they were pretty much all filmed up here, um, it's great to just kind of be where those movies were made. And then it's nice to just be around a lot of other people who are also kind of obsessed with Westerns. The Sunrise Gathering kicks off a series of tours of the Alabamas offered during the film festival. And so now we're going out again to see where Wire uh, uses a weapon to shoot Davidson. Guided tours of the rocks take fans to the exact spot where scenes were shot. So this is where uh, they finally escape their, their bindings, uh, Hoppy, California, and Lucky. Don Kelson is leading a brand new tour of the locations of Hopalong Cassidy's 1941 film in Old Colorado. And it looks like Hoppy himself is along for the tour. I had a Hoppy outfit when I was six years old and it had pictures of Hoppy on it and it had Hoppy's name all over it. I thought, that isn't Hoppy's outfit. That, you know, I want, I want the real outfit. So when I turned 60, I, I got it. That's it. Yep. John Gillian was five years old when Hopalong Cassidy was at his peak. My aunt had the only TV in the family, so we had to drive to Pasadena to watch her TV on Sunday night, and that's when we saw Hoppy. William Boyd starred as Hopalong in more than 100 Hoppy movies and TV episodes from 1935 to 1952, and they made a lasting impression on his young fans. Hoppy's was a boyhood hero, you know, along with Roy and Gene. And I think I admired Hoppy more, though, than, than the others. Part of it was his outfit. He just really looked great. Hoppy John spent 18 months researching and recreating the outfit identical to what the silver screen cowboy wore in the late 1930s, working with the University of Wyoming, which owns the Hoppy collection, to get everything just right. He even commissioned a matching pair of Colt 45s. These are engraved exactly like Hoppy's. Hoppy's were were purchased in 1927 from the Colt factory. Uh, they were engraved at the Colt factory. Other fans on the tour are just as dedicated in their own way, like this couple who've come to the festival four times, all the way from England. Oh, because we like Western films. We like Hopalong Cassidy and John Wayne, don't we? Randolph Scott. Yeah, and Lone Ranger. <laughs> Along with the movie fans, there are fans of movie making, who marvel at the expertise of the filmmakers who worked here. I have a little film background, and I, I really appreciate how they found just the right location to hide the horse, to put the cattle, to build the barn, to build the corral, yeah. and uh, how clever they were to do that with the right light and the, the lighting and the, the background of the mountains. I mean, I, I'm just in envy of, of the art direction of especially the black and whites that were out here. And these rocks, again, are just part of the cast. Somebody made that conscious effort to include them. One of the reasons Hollywood loves working in Lone Pine is it's so easy to work here. For example, you can be doing a gunfight up in the rocks there with guys hiding behind the boulders, and without even moving your tripod, all you have to do is swivel the camera around, and you have a completely different scene with Mount Whitney in the background. And this is all happening just a couple miles from your hotel room in town. And because it all looks just like it always has, it's a great thrill for fans to see where their favorite pictures were made. It's and especially when you've got a picture that shows you exactly the same When you think spot. I've stood where Randolph Scott stood, exactly, or hop along, or wherever they are, actually stood there. You go home, play the DVD and say, I've stood there. And I think what it does is you, you feel like you see the spot and you feel like you were in that movie somehow, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. It really personalizes it. Yeah. It would have been fun to be here while they were shooting that, just to see how they thought yeah, this was going to look later. Yeah. They really understood what they were making. You could spend the whole weekend wandering these rocks. 
But then you'd miss all the action back in town. Team roping is just one of the many activities. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Down at Statham Hall, another roper is showing off his stuff. Rifleman star Johnny Crawford. Uh, Monty Montana gave me a cotton rope on one of the very first episodes. Johnny will be forever known with Chuck Connors as father and son, Mark and Lucas McCain, in The Rifleman. And I'm very fortunate to have been part of it. You know? And I'm proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's see if I can do a rollover here. More than 50 years after it aired, it's still great fun for fans who grew up watching that classic Western TV show to meet the star and hear the stories. A wonderful experience to meet people that have, that we share something, you know, special. And I love hearing, um, you know, about their, their favorite episodes and stuff. And it, it, it's, it's, um, it's very sweet. And of course, everybody wants to know, what was Chuck Connors like? He was very mischievous and had a great sense of humor. And he loved, I was, I was kind of shy. And he loved uh, um, humiliating me. <laughs> he would say, Johnny, here, let's, I, I, I've, I've got to get something at, at, this, at the drugstore. And or something, come, come along with me. And we'd leave the, the studio and walk down Ventura Boulevard in our outfits, you know, and, and, uh, and he was bold, and, you know, he loved it, and, <laughs> but people loved it, they'd honk at him and stuff, and he'd talk to people as they were crossing, if, if we were stopped at a light, you know, he'd roll down the window and, and, and uh, start talking to people walking across the street and say, say I'm, I'm with my son, you know. <laughs> Mm, he was he was crazy. We ran into Johnny a bit later at Rob Word's memorabilia table. John, Johnny's one of the few that knows who some of these obscure character actors are from the press books. Like Singing Guns, he knew that it was Vaughn Monroe that was the star. It was an era when we expected our heroes to set a good example, and they did. Just steps away, we meet Cheryl Rogers Barnett, the daughter of Roy Rogers and Dell Evans, signing copies of her latest book. I thought she was a neat lady until they got married, and then I gave her fits, so thank God she was a saint because she put up with me. Cheryl grew up hanging out at the Republic Picture Studio in Los Angeles where her dad made many of his movies. Growing up at a studio was such fun. There was no Disneyland when I was a kid, so having access to the wardrobe and the makeup department and going out to the what they called the tank which was a big pond thing and watching them do battle scenes you know with ships and all out there i mean it it was a great place to grow up lone pine is a special place for cheryl her dad made his very first movie here and Dell evans made one of her very last public appearances at the festival they were really special people. I mean, they were so incredibly talented. This is a great experience, you know, to have people come up and tell you how much watching a movie had meant to them or, or how much, you know, seeing my grandfather, some, some of these folks had actually run across him in real life. The grandson of actor Joel McRae and actress Frances D. Wyatt McRae is a cherished regular at the festival. The actor, MC, spokesman and producer comes to Lone Pine to keep the memory of his beloved grandparents burning bright. And fans appreciate the effort. People appreciate being able to have some connection to, uh, you know, to somebody that meant so much to them. And, and uh, even if it's a different generation, they still, they, they feel that there's something special about being able to shake your hand or talk to you, you know. So, and, and that gives me a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of good feelings to, to be able to communicate to that, that to them and to be able to share that with them, share that experience. So. But the Western is not a thing of the past. And Eric Heisner and Al Bringas are working to make sure of that. The romanticism of the horses and the landscapes is still out there, and people are hungry for that. We meet a lot of people that uh, want to keep the West alive also. So it's not just us. I mean, we're the ones that are actually producing it and trying to make it happen, but the audience is there for us. Eric's written a Western novel and produced an award-winning Western film, which he shot in the Alabama Hills. Al is an artist. 
The pair also sell Western wild rags modeled after the ones worn by John Wayne and other Western stars. They can even shape your hat. Just another fun aspect of the Western genre. But their real passion is the Western film and doing their part to keep the genre alive and well. The, the thing about the, the Alabama Hills rocks up there, shooting a Western, we can shoot a Western now that looks exactly the same as it did almost 100 years ago. Meantime, screenings of Western movies, most of them made right here, are a staple of the festival. They included Buffalo Bill, starring Wyatt's grandfather, Joel McRae, and directed by William Wellman, whose son remembers hanging out on the set when he was just seven years old. Well, I just have nothing but wonderful memories of it. Uh, you know, I got to sit, to sit on uh, Maureen O'Hara's lap, and uh, to be on that set, and they make me up to look okay, like, you know, I'm Buffalo Billy. <laughs> And uh, I loved it. Your first name? It's great fun to hear about the old westerns, but it's also very interesting to hear what's happening in big time Hollywood right now. If you saw the recent attempt at the, the Lone Ranger with Johnny Depp. Uh, Actor Bruce Boxleitner, stuntman Diamond Farnsworth, screenwriter Robert Knott of the Ed Harris western Appaloosa, and LA Times film critic Kenneth Tran offered their fascinating insights during one of the weekend's many panel discussions. There are trends in what executives want to make, which is a different thing than what audiences want to see. We got in, we made it, could we do it today? Yeah. By the way, with this amazing landscape we have here, this place was always a character. The environment, the West itself, is always a character in the Western movie, right? Unlike just about any other genre. You know, everybody watches, you know, the guy doing the transfer from the horse to the stagecoach or a wagon. You know what, you know, and, and when you watch it, you go, oh, okay, that's all right, but you don't realize how dangerous it is. What if that horse trips and falls and throws you down underneath that stagecoach? You're dead. That's all there was to it. And, and, and believe me, back in those older days, they ran over quite a few people trying the stuff. They did. And, and it was, bring me another one. <laughs> I mean, if you want to make a historically accurate Western, that's important. If you don't, it's not. I want to be entertained by what's on the screen. I don't care if it reflects reality or not. I want to know if it does. But I want to walk out of that theater feeling good, not feeling, boy, they really nailed the, you know, yeah. the nails on the barn were vintage. I don't need to know that. But across the street, vintage is what it's all about. We'll take a tour of what some people call the best movie museum in the country when today's Wild West continues. The success of the Lone Pine Film Festival got people talking about building a museum. And in 2006, that dream came true, thanks to a generous donation by Beverly and Jim Rogers. And today, the Museum of Western Film History is known as one of the best movie museums in the country. It's amazing. It. It's overwhelming. For Shirley Fuller and Carol Gerdell, a walk through the Museum of Western Film History is an emotional experience. I got tears in my eyes when I saw the Zane Gray collection because as a kid, I, I read every one of the 24 volume set. Every one of those stories, probably three or four times. From the silent movies based on the stories of Zane Gray to relatively brand new pictures, Lone Pine's movie museum is a treasure trove of the films made in the Alabama Hills and the surrounding area. Ever since the first movie crew came here in the 1920s, to film the Roundup. What we do most is Western films, but we just don't want to ignore the other genres that were made here as well, like High Sierra, it's a very important film, Bad Day at Black Rock, and neither of those are Western films. The car Humphrey Bogart drove in High Sierra is part of the permanent collection, and Bob White brought the restored 1937 cord owned by Tom Mix to Lone Pine for a special weekend appearance during the film festival. Everybody loves the history behind this car. Tom Mix was a Western megastar during the silent film era, earning some $400 million in today's dollars during his career. The one-time working cowboy got his start in showbiz at the Miller Brothers 101 Ranch, a traveling Wild West show of the early 1900s. 
Well, I grew up uh, 30 miles from the 101 Wild West Show. And Tom Mix, he had come from Pennsylvania, and he knew, you know, he was a horseman. He, that was no question about it. But he, that's where he became a real cowboy. White spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to restore the car Tom Mix was driving when he was killed in a crash in 1940. Mix customized the cord with medals he'd received from European royalty, leather splash pads. This is the original one that I found in an attic out in California. Even a holster for the 357 pistol he kept handy under the steering wheel. Now the neat thing about that is his uh, daughter Ruth, they'd go around from circus to circus, Tom Mix's circus, and he'd say, grab the wheel, grab the wheel. And she'd grab the wheel and he'd pull that gun out and start shooting rabbits and squirrels and telephone poles and anything that, that he wanted to. So she used to get mad at him because he'd do that to her all the time. And Jack Hoxie who most people have never heard of. <laughs> but we're trying to change that. Jack Hoxie, Ken Maynard, and Buck Jones are among the other silent screen cowboys you can learn about in the museum's early years display. Ken, that's Ken Maynard's hat. And this, these are his chaps. And his gun and his gun. Now, ball. whether that was actually used in a movie, I don't know. The post-war exhibit shows a different kind of Western emerging after World War II, with new stars, new themes, and new roles for women. They had the adult Western then, which was quite different than Hopalong Cassidy and Gene Autry and Roy Rogers. Randolph Scott made lots of movies in Lone Pine. Today his hat, boots, and gun belt are on display, along with a rare poster that shows an alternate title for the classic movie, Ride the High Country. But they changed the name just before it actually got distributed across the country to Ride the High Country. That was considered a more exciting, marketable name than Guns in the Afternoon. Yellow Sky starring Gregory Peck was made in the Alabamas. The museum owns the working script of director William Wellman. And when he had shot the, the scene that he was, and he was happy with it, he would exit out. So that's why there's X's on it. But he made all these comments about, would you see this guy sweat? So, you know, he was thinking, do, do they needed to show that cowboy sweating? Um, for instance, and all kinds of details like that. So it's very interesting. We're very lucky to have it. The very thorough Lone Ranger and Hopalong Cassidy exhibits bring back memories for many baby boomers. The museum has a vast collection of memorabilia from both. The Hoppy collection is especially impressive. There's even a Hoppy bicycle. And it's in prim, primo shape. The Singing Cowboy exhibit, of course, includes Roy and Dale. And the car Gene Autry's horse jumped over in Trail to San Antonio. Joe Irigoyen, it's supposed to be Gene Autry, but it's Joe Irigoyen jumping champion over the car. There's movie guns. We have the, the, cut, the sawed off gun from Wanted Dead or Alive. And the tools of the trade of the stuntmen and women who brought that Western action to life. They call it a jerk fest. They would tie uh, ropes or cables onto it and pull the, the uh, rider off the, off the horse and it would look like he was shot. Along with the Westerns, there's the Easterns. Movies like Gunga Dean, where the Alabama Hills played the Middle East, Asia, or India. I had someone who joked, they said, you, from every country in the world, you can see Mount Whitney, because we played so many. We've even played, of course, planets in outer space and the backside of the moon. Hollywood still comes yeah. to Lone Pine. The original Tremors shot here, along with G.I. Joe, Gladiator, and Iron Man and most recently, Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained. And so he was always asking me to take him around the museum, and he said to me one day, he said, I want my exhibit to be better than Iron Man's exhibit. And I said, well, we can't afford you, Quentin. Your stuff comes up, everybody bids on it, and that's like our budget for the year. And so the next day, his um, assistant came in with his chair, with a signed script that won the Oscar, signed by Jamie Foxx and all the stars that were here. And then he calls me in June of that year um, and says, uh, can you come down and pick up the dentist wagon? Just eight years after groundbreaking, the reputation and collection of the Museum of Western Film History has grown to the point where there's talk of doubling the museum's size. Inyo County Film Commissioner Chris Langley is happy to welcome most any film project to the area, but would especially love to see more Westerns made here. That although the West was really only a 20 year period, it has framed who we are and people are always drawn to that. John Wayne, I still would want on my side. You know, a lot of people are still hungry for the Duke. John Wayne lookalike, Jake Thorne was one of those reenactors shooting film and blanks in the Alabamas during the festival. He's been gone for over 30 years. What's great about what I do is I can make him come to life. He came all the way from North Carolina to be here. I did, I mean, this, this is where it's happening. For Western movie fans, this is where it's always happened. 
where Hollywood's made the West come to life and where it still does for those who love it. I've tried, I don't think you can explain it to you. You either love it or you don't, but the people that love it really love it and they know what we're talking about. It's, it's something that you gotta have. I don't think you learn it, it's in your heart. Uh, it's just watching those old movies. Uh, makes you feel good about this country and what you can do on a horseback. If you're one of those true believers, the Lone Pine Film Festival and the magnificent country and heritage it celebrates is not to be missed. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedore. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in today's Wild West or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com. Next week on Today's Wild West, we'll take you for a ride on an authentic wagon train. Push them on, push them on! Just part of the action. So we saddle up with the Reno Rodeo Cattle Drive. <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs>